TS Circuit Playoffs in Montreal. The American hero, the three-time WCS champion, pulling his probes to a single mineral patch. Neem. In the top right. Okay. Stop. Thank you. The young Italian with an incredibly bright future ahead of him. But the present is just fine as well. The Zerg Rainer. Now, it is EVP. It is a best of five. Historically, Neeb's Protoss versus Zerg has been his uh, most accomplished matchup. It's what he won several WCS finals off of. Now, let, me, let, me, let me steal an observer. Observer, one of you. One of you is probably. Oh, thank you. It's the original content, everybody. <clears throat> oh, it's not a best of nine either. It's a best of five. Though I would love to see a best of nine. No, did that not work? There you go. Now I can pretend like I'm a professional observer. Thank you, guys. No? Apparently it doesn't work? You gonna make me do... I don't need to hire a cameraman. Anyways, Neeb is going for the early expand, gate expand, around a Cerulean Fall. Which is a, a pretty defensible map early on. You got a high ground. You got a ramp. Uh, which allows a Protoss to be a bit more comfortable. You're not coming up that ramp easily as a Zerg without going completely all in, which is easier to scout. On maps like Blue Shift or Catalyst or Parasite, where everything is on the level, where you don't have that ramp leading up to your base, especially not one close to the Nexus. Uh, it, it gives a lot more options for Zerg to put on a little bit more pressure. It still, it still t is quite an investment, but it's more dangerous. Adept Shaden in. What's he going to see? The first he, he actually completes it, which is very uncommon. Kind of a mind game there. And he's definitely looking for something. Gonna see speed on the way. We'll actually see, should see one out of three in gas. No kills, but he gets out. We have the bread and butter. We're watching, Neve is, is it's almost like Neve and Haz play two different races. Cause Neve pretty much writes the book on how to play a standard Protoss game. And then has, uh, sets that book on fire. A handful of Adepts. Well, it looks like, uh, the original Adept shaded back. Before those speedlings could get there, just in time. Laner losing his Overlord, but plenty of information there. He sees the two gas timing at the net. He saw that he died to a phoenix, which you don't need to see a stargate to know that he has a stargate when you die to a phoenix. I figured that all out myself. But it's going to be a second stargate is the choice. Now, Raynor might understand this is an option. He saw the double gas early. If there is no warp prism pressure, if he doesn't see uh, a robo an arc, or an archon drop or something like that. Or he just kind of scouts it with a second ovi that he's been holding in reserve. Smart plays out of young Raynor. I feel like I feel like I have to be a Protoss when it comes down to it. Even though Neeb's like 20 or 21 now, maybe. But it's like it's like now, young Rainer. He it continues to have a bright future, but he has to be quick, not too ambitious, or yes, he might yes, overextend yes. himself. Just as I deserve. I don't know. Ten extra low energy stream point. Got to happy sounding there. The points are made up, and the games don't matter. Unless Sarah wins. When Adept tried to get stuck back into the minerals. 
A handful more. He doesn't have plus one. The Oracle gonna ward away to the Zerglings. The Adept should be fine. Who's is a Phoenix? A little sloppy on the other side. He was microing. The Oracle. It looks like the Phoenix will be incidentally scouted here. A bit unfortunate for Neem. As this will give Tom for Rainer to get a second set of spores. Well, he already has a couple sets of spores. He must have either figured that out before or suspected it. As the lack of Archon drop coming in, the lack of any sort of gas-based pressure kind of gives away... Now, this... Okay, these Phoenixes are not getting the work done that they need to get done. They are just not. He's still making them. But... If you're not starting to kill... Rainer already has 63 drones. He has four queens walking around. They have some energy. And a couple transfusers. So... He's not Usually what you want to do with phoenixes is, is you want to just keep s poking them in the side over and over and over. And eventually they learn to deal with it, but it takes time. And by the time they finally recover from that, you have either a much stronger air army was the older way to do it, like you go to carriers. But nowadays it's more like transitioning into ground very safely with map control. Like Immortals, Charge Lots, Templar, Storm, all those shenanigans. Well, not that. Whatever it is, not that. That, not that. Anything else but that. Uh, and it doesn't stop. Okay. It looks like Neeb almost embracing a has build with, with such a delayed Templar archives, but we'll be getting it. At the last second, he lost all of his Phoenixes. He killed a grand total of six drones for six Phoenixes. That definitely... That's some pretty basic math there. Charge is not done. The Templar Archives is not done. The Robo is not done. Plus one is not done. Hydras, done. All right, figured it all out. Now, Render doesn't have a deadly amount yet. He still can't really go up a ramp. A stasis word could change things. He's not gonna try to go for Storm early. Just try to get any amount of Archons here. Now, this doesn't mean Neeb's out of it yet, but Stasis catches some of the links. There's nothing to really cover for the Hydras. Oh, but he doesn't have the Guardian Shield with him. He's worried about the links at the back. The Archon's not there, but with no links in front. The plus one charge lot's coming through. Neeb turns it around. Young Rainer. Too ambitious and overextended. And while Neeb lost a lot, it looks like Rainer gonna return the favor. I love that. I love that opportunity. Like, just taking the opportunity to do that. Now, if he's able to get the Templar and these, and some probes, well, well, I mean, that's not nothing. It's not great. Young ring, I gotta stop. Get him out, get him out, get him out of my game, okay. <clears throat> no Immortals. Now, that's not a huge factor against Hydraling Bane. Obviously, you'd rather have more Immortals than less Immortals. It's mortally important. But, uh... In this scenario specifically, where there aren't Lurkers or Roach Ravager, not even that many Hydras, it's not as huge a deal as it would be in a more standard game. Mainling speed is on the way, plus two melee attack, which allows Mainlings to one-shot probes and two-shot Templar. Not quite done yet, but six, seven Mainlings. Neeb, what's your reaction time? Neeb, 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 no! Nine, 11, 12 probes, okay. Got dicey for a second. On the bright side, Neeb always makes way too many probes, so he's still at 65, so he's fine. There's also a chance a warp-in was on cooldown during that as well. Neeb just keeps making probes. He'll get like 80, 85 probes. It's the American way, all right? You buy way too many probes, and you're like, well, I have them in case I need them. There was a sale on HSN. They were promoting the new NASA probe. And, I and once the Banelings are gone, the Hydras have to retreat. Few charge lots try to come in. 
But the uh, main strength of Neeb's army is intact. He lost, well, I think he lost one Immortal in there. He lost Immortal, he lost a few High Templars, he's lost Phoenixes, but the Archons. The Archons. Their power. Overwhelming. Oh! An Oracle shot out of this guy. This War Prism's still in a very good spot. There's a lot of space to maneuver on this map. It's deceptively large once you expand to the corners. There's these back bases. You start to realize, oh, one Archon stands against the darkness, but two! No, not plus two, but he will. Oh, almost getting the save off. The charge lots at the back. Not going to do much. A lot more charge lots for Neeb. Still a few more banes on the left side. Plus two. These banes are going to be so much more potent with that upgrade. But he will drag Rainer's army back. Young Rainer. There's the fleet beacon. Already a hive and a spire on the way, so the fleet beacon not too far behind, but definitely not really preempting the tech path. Baneling's just kind of rolling in from almost seemingly random angles. Another zealot. He finds the prism, but Neeb pulls it back in time. Hydras and Bane's on the left side. <clears throat> Looks like a very dead probe there. Oh, more Bane's coming in. You can't let one slip. A single Bane slipping through will, will kill your whole mineral line. And that's not that much of an exaggeration. All right, War Prism. You didn't need to come all the way home. That was just excessive. The Brood Lords are on the way. Well, the Greater Spire is on the way. There are no Corruptors. Lings, Banes, into the Mineral Line. 15, 16 probes. Neeb taking hits on both sides, trying to deflect, trying to beat this back. Loses 26 probes. Still has 52. Still has plus 3 on the way. A phoenix gets into the main. It sees the greater spire. It sees how important this air transition. Neeb taking hits. But he's not knocked out yet. Now, especially, especially once he's got everything together. This is where Neeb usually shines. Splitting his forces. But in this scenario, he had no vision. The immortals are caught out. Of course, as soon as I say it, Mainling is taken out on the left side. That that attack will be deflected. And if he's able to get on top of a big clump of Hydras, he can potentially prevent the transition into Broodlords. He's got to be careful, though. Storm is done, but are there any Templar? They are uh, slowly making their way back. A Mainling connects. He's still at 64 probes, but there are Storms. The hammer can be brought down. That's one thing about Neeb. No matter how many probes he loses, he's going to keep building more. He's lost 52 this game, but still has 64. Rainer bringing everything together. Now, Tempests are a bit of a half measure. Tempests will kill Broodlords, but if you're already ahead, usually you want to go Carriers to potentially close out a game. And if you're behind, it's really hard to actually get the Tempest in a good enough position to kill enough Broodlords to matter. So it's a bit of an interesting situation. Tempests are almost always kind of a desperation move as opposed to going carriers. But it's better than nothing. Another round of Banelings. Rainer before... Oh wait, he has broods with this. He's trying to lay it down. Neeb must hold. The attack on the left side. He has the Tempest here. He doesn't have the Tempest on the right. That means he's going to be cornered up against his own Nexus. The Broodling's raining down. Some more Zealots going to be warped in. Templar back to the other side. Is there a recall? Does he use a recall? He doesn't use a recall. I mean, I don't know how you'd recall against this. He can maybe storm. He can use the Warp Prism to storm. Some splits to the left. He killed the Nexus. Some more Banes coming in, but Neeb deflects again. The Ling's trying to get on top of it. He does have Adrenal Glands. They do a lot of damage and rip through the Archon, something you don't usually see. The Storm's hitting the Brutes. So are the Tempests. But Neeb, a single small Protoss force flanked on both sides. The Brood Lord's trying to take out the Templar, but they're not going to be enough. He still has one more Storm. It must be. He holds with the Immortals. A Warping coming up gets one of the Juggles back. The Tempest may be going down. 
And while Neeb holds, and a miraculous hold at that. Is it enough? He has to go across the map. The Zergling's on the counterattack. He's going forward. But he doesn't have storms. Those are changelings, making it feel like he has more than he does. Some juggles back. The Archon's not enough. The Tempest's definitely not going to turn the tides. GG. Rainer takes game number one. In somewhat convincing manner. I wouldn't say that was completely one-sided there. But, uh... Neeb making some pretty sloppy mistakes with his phoenixes, but pretty quickly, Rainer returned the favor with some of those attacks. But overall, Neeb really never got the opportunity to get the aggression he needed. He Neebed. Oh no, that was, that was a stretch. We're going to game two, which is on Fracture. Now, Fracture is a much smaller map, a lot less bases, easier to wall off for Protoss, definitely a, a more Protoss pick, I would say. That probe can get across to block anything but the quickest hatch first. And Raynor is going, well, actually, no. Yeah, he, he's, I guess he's just looking to see what he's up against, trying to prevent the block, or at least force it out earlier. A pool's already on the way. He's not relying on this. Some more nibbles. But no hatch, because he does have the investment of pool and some gas. Neve on the other side. Now, 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 now. We all know the lyrics of this beautiful Terran music in a Protoss versus Zerg battlefield. That's what we need to spice it up with. The probe on the back line. Some pokes. And now we're shaping up like a little bit of the early game. Maybe I'll block your hatch. Maybe I'll go pool first. Maybe we should just both go home and complain about it on Twitter. Well, uh, and now we're back to the standard game. Now, it seems like that's... I'm not exactly sure how that wall plays out. Are we going to see a Stargate? Neem, wait, what? Neem doesn't have the gas for very much at all. Like, if he wanted to go for a Stargate, he'd have the gas for a Stargate. So that's what kind of confuses me. What? 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 What is this wall? How about... Builds a robo. Thank you, bro. So that's not a wall. Is the answer I? Is there, there are just two zerglings in his base, so. Oh, what a catch! Is he gonna try to put on a little bit of counter poke? Will he see there's no third? Actually commits to the main. Rainer will be losing one drone. Some more target fire. That one's dodged out by the spore. He tries to get another hit off, but the wings will hunt him down. Down, 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 down. I'm just jamming out to the Terran music. Like, there's nothing... I'm not sure what this Immortal Sentry build is here. This map has a few more choke points and uh, ramps you can definitely use, but... Um, Neeb, Neeb, what? Neeb, what? Uh... 
Well, that was... That looks like me playing. Need not... Kind of feeling kind of shaky in this series so far, to be honest. A lot of units being lost that... That really should not be being lost. Alright. Now what's the... I mean, you can't... You, you invested a hundred of your gas in that first century. I don't know what the intent is to follow this up. You really, like, your early gas as Protoss is super important because that's how you hit sharp timings. They're based around when you get enough gas for certain things. When you have enough gas for a Twilight or a Forge or, or a Robo or, or a Templar Archives. Plus one is started. This is like, this is like an old school PvZ. We're just gonna get a Robo and some sentries and maybe we'll think about moving out or maybe not. Like, three gates. He does have access to Rico. Oh, not, not another one. Not another one. Oh, no. The pickoffs. I'd say that's well worth half a dozen lanes for another sentry. Now, this attack, like, this is such a weird attack. He doesn't have enough force fields to really save him. He can't get close, like he can't go past the ramp, otherwise he can't get force fields and recall out. That's uh, this is a very old school style, like, I'm gonna make you make units, Zerg player. I'm not gonna kill you, but what if I am, like a? Uh... Because as a Zerg, you can't 100% know he didn't add like six more gates and try to kill him. But it, it seems highly unlikely, but you still have to make units because otherwise you just die if he happens to attack. So. Rainer, oh my god. Oh god. Well, that is rough as Lings get into both bases. It doesn't, I, he does have a warp in there. Four probes so far. This is all taken away from, uh... Well, did his Dark Shrine get scouted as well? Where's the Dark Shrine? It didn't get scouted. Not that the Dark Shrine is going to be used for DTs. The Observer sniped by a Corrosive Bile. And it just keeps going. Four DTs are warped in. I mean... Now, now watch this, like... 40 Ts are going to walk in and kill 30 drones on a base, and then suddenly it's going to look like Neve is a genius. There's no... DTs are such a weird choice in this scenario as well. It doesn't seem like the direction you go after going Immortals and Sentries and Upgrades. Like, you should go Templar Archives or, or even, like, Disruptors or something. I don't know. One DT on the right. Oh, my God. Four DTs in the main. He's going straight for the lair. The heart of the swarm. Neeb already killing five drones. It looks like he's cleaned up one base of it. He's blocking both sides with DTs and zealots and charge lots are done. They have plus one. The lair is gone. He recalls the DTs out. And go for blink. Do it for me, Neeb. Get blink. Now he's going to make Archons, right? So... And five are that's a scary army now. The DTs. The decisive play. A lot of mistakes made, but those DTs in the right spot at the right time. Players at this caliber don't just build spores if there's no reason to build spores, and everything pointed towards a ground-based attack out of need. He just didn't expect the Dark Templar. That's a lot of Archons. The supply difference doesn't really tell the story. Not with these not with immortal Archon. Some of the most cost-effective per supply units in the game. He's just going. Neeb is not stopping. The pain train has arrived and it has no brakes. Uh, a few sentries at the back. You gotta be a little bit careful about warping in. 
Oh, he has two more prisms. All right, you can be less careful then. He's just going up. Maybe a force field on the ramp. He, he pins him back. No warp ins yet. The rest of the roaches are coming back. Neve is, is going through, but if he doesn't get the warp ins, that's how his units start thinning out. The juggles are good. There's a warp in there. A handful of zealots. Well, Neve doesn't have that much money because Neve has 27 probes. He lost most of the probes at his net. I neglected to mention that. The roaches actually did a lot of damage, so this juggling is super important. He's juggling back. Most of the immortals actually, it looks like Rain are putting it together. I didn't realize how little economy Neve had. There's only one warp prism left. He's trying to juggle so many units in and out. That immortal, so close to death but living up to its name. An Archon with no shields, Immortals with no HP, but Neeb with plenty of a dream. Oh wait, there's no detection! He gets another Ravager with DTs! The charge lot's warping! He can, oh, he loses one! It's them, oh, he gets the Archon with two HP! What a save! What a oh, there goes the Archon, but the Immortal won't die. Is there detection? There is no detection. That DT is just winning. He's warping in three more DTs. The DT is going to seal the deal. When in doubt, dar when behind, Dark Shrine. He killed another lair. He's remaking a lair in his remade main that at one time had a lair. Trying to make scores. Oh, actually does get an Archon out. Oh! The Warp Prism goes down, but not before the units are warped in. Rainer's had 12 drones. The Zealots and Charge Lot slicing, and Neeb takes it back. It still looked dicey, but the decisive Templar, the DTs, put Neeb on the board. One to one. Yeah, still, still definitely not looking that clean. I, I will say that. As we go into Acid Plant. It was a bit of a mind game on the Dark Templar, for sure. It was such a weird timing to go for DTs. Like, well after your first and second stage of tech. And that definitely is what helped decide it. But, in the bottom right, on Acid Plant. Young Rainer. And in the top left. Also young, but not as young. Neeb. A veteran at this point. The probe on the way out. We're going to treat this like a has probe where you just follow it with the camera the whole time. Because it's going to decide. I would love if Neeb just broke out the cannon rush. Just whip it out there. I don't think he will. I can't remember if I've ever seen Neeb do a can- I've, I've, I'm sure I've seen Neeb do a cannon rush. But not like the shield battery robo push. I might have just put it out of my mind. I don't know. <sighs> but I'm, I'm racking my brain. I don't think I remember any, like, of those one base commitments. Oh, that probe. Stopped at the door. The gates of those minerals. Wait. <gasps> First blood. The Predator Drones hunt down and kill the innocent probe. War crimes or uh, self-defense? You be the judge. I love this song. It's my jam. Rainer now free. Take as many bases as he wants. Neeb looks like he's going to default to the Stargate for this match. Will he prove me wrong in a moment? It looks like no. He's not starting Warp Gate, which is quite a tell. Rainer will see that too. He's looking right at it. 
You'll see the warp gate spin up in a second. You'll see the difference. After he gets the second adept. There you go. Proton's buildings light up when they're producing. Adept on the way. Throwing some shade into the natural. So dramatically. Bam, 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 bam. I, I, I just can't get over it. More shade thrown. Will he commit? I was, I was scared he would. Oh, the creep tumors. But the oncologist. This is gonna go for another. It's a tumor. No. Don't do it, Neeb. Don't do it. He dips out at the last second. The phoenix going to work. So much shade, but speed is nearing completion. Still chilling. He might combine with the Oracle to try to do some damage. No, he's shading away. Doesn't want to risk the speedlings catching up to him. Rainer actually was speed a little later than usual. Usually it finishes like 3.30, 3.40. Finishing after the four minute mark here. So it looks like he delayed his gas to get a quicker third. Which, uh, not really here nor there. Gets you a few more minerals. Not a big deal unless you plan on doing some sort of all in. Or they're all in in you. Oh, that's not quite done yet. But he dodges with another score. Rainer only takes a single drone loss. Nice deflection. It's looking very much like an Archon drop follow-up out of Neeb. This is almost the default play. We should be seeing... Well, where are the two more gates? They're at the back. Where? A War Prism and a Templar Archives to follow it up. He's had these gas for a bit. And does he do the charge six gate version or does he go for a third? That's the question. Neeb. Oh, adding more adepts, so. I think he wants to be able to just take a third. That seems like a more Neeb. Oh, body blocking for the probe. But he might give up his adepts for the cause. If he still loses the probe, this is going to be so sad. Okay. Now, I've noticed this. Rainer actually just seems to have another Overlord. Um, that, that That's just in the corner to scout. And most players don't do that because they assume a Phoenix will kill it. But it's gotten valuable information in pretty much every time it's come in. He gets the info that this, while it is an Archon drop, it's not a huge commitment. It's not a bunch of gates behind. At least more than likely, unless he hit him at the net. The Archons... Oh, how did this take so much damage? Oh, it looks like it poked in a little. Maybe flew into some queens. It should not have taken that much damage. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. The Archons try to come in, but it's already... Like, you can't lose that much HP on the War Prism so early. This will do nothing. It's not bad defensively. If he loses it, that is, uh... That can be tantamount to, to losing the game. So... There is so much investment. This War Prism has to anchor a Zerg player at their base for a certain amount of time. You have to keep them back in their base, or you will die to roaches, and that's just how it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well. No. His brother did not make it out. And now, this brother will not make it out. Because, like his mother is too fat to fit through the goddamn wall. Need quite, oh, this series has been a series of need, I, uh, just some mistakes, uncharacteristic. Now, here, here's the typical excuses, just some excuses, um, before this event, Neeb played in the, the round of four, the semifinals, the first foreigner in the semifinals in the Global StarCraft League since 2011. He played an incredible match against TY. 
didn't quite come out on top, but apparently that same day he flew to Canada, to Montreal from Korea. And then the next day this event started. So, um, can't be easy. And it definitely seems like it's showing a little. But, there's some immortals here. Did he not get charged? Neep, 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 neep. He got charged now, but that is kind of an important upgrade. You shouldn't be getting charged when your opponent already has a hive and a spire nearing completion. Hmm. It looks like he's just going to try to hold, but this is... Now, he did force the Archon drop does forest roaches uh, so I, I do like what Rainer's doing he's kind of like well I don't want to just go roach hydra because that's the one thing you might be well equipped to deal with I'm just going to immediately go up to broods while feigning roach hydra aggression Rainer is not committing that's still a scary amount of hydras like you got to respect it but this it, Rainer is not going to try to kill him with the roach hydra at least it, it that looks like the situation he's going to pressure why is this mortal here? No! But it's really just buying space for the broods. He wants to get the broods out before, for example, a warp prism getting in with charge lots. Six immortals on the deck. So once you've reached five plus ground and have more than a couple storms it's almost impossible for ground armies to really break through maybe if you're maxed with a good flank but that's a lot of damage the brood lords are very necessary to break this army at least in any sort of reliable manner rainer has already preempted some of these counter look at that look at look at it look at this wall and then the zealots just run by i don't <laughs> But he set it up just to shut down counterattacks, including his evolution chamber. Now the war prism as well. The fleet beacon starts. Neeb gonna try to do damage, but the broodlord's already in the mail. They will be delivered in just a few moments. Oh, uh, what do you do now? What do you do now? A little rough there. The uh, Roach Hydra army at the back. Now, this is an interesting scenario to base trade in. This is one of the few scenarios where the Broodlords I don't think really pay off. He's got a lot of charge lots. With a solid recall, he recalls... Oh, that's a, that's a very smart recall there. Gets the base. Still has the charge lots to do damage. If he can clean up the Roach Hydra, he still has enough supply. Oh, a big storm. A nearly maximum damage storm at the front. Bringing just enough units to come back. And this is this is the makings of a solid defense. Another big storm. But, unfortunately, kills some of his own units. Rainer at 63 drones. And he doesn't. he's not maxed out. And he doesn't have a huge bank. If Neeb can defend the Broodlord wave... If there are queens underneath, they have transfuse. The upgrades, plus two on the deck for both players. That's a lot of broodlords. A broodlord is pretty scary. If he can target down the Templar, he can trigger the immortal shields as well. The broodlords are starting to break. Feedbacks, of course, very effective here. He does have that's several tempests, three on the field now. Of course not, the transfuse is very early. A warp it on the right side. The cannon's holding for now. A great storm on the broods. One will fall. Looks like he's trying to target down the Templar individually. Not quite making it there. A pickup on one of the queens. Will be knocked out. Where did that storm even come from? He's chipping through the broods. A warp it on the right side. Neeb trying to hold. The immortals underneath. The brood lord count being thinned out. He's trying to target the last ones down. Just immortals on the ground. The hydras? Not enough. Or actually too much. Hydras are a zerg unit. I meant they were killing the Immortals. You got the idea. Rainer takes the third match. And goes up 2-1. to one.
but it's not over yet for Neeb. He has lost. Yes. He's lost two more. Two now, rather. But maybe he can be found. The next, ma next match is on Lost and Found. Rainer up two to one over the American. Young Rainer. Young Rainer. And, uh... Now, I'm gonna bring my co-caster on with me. Um... For this game. Um, at least, at least for the start. I, I, I am happy to introduce Rotterdam. Um, how you feeling, Roddy? Hello guys and welcome to the Home Story Cup 9 here in Krefeld. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it this time, but I will try to be back next time and I hope my spirit is still part of this tournament. Thank you for being here. Now, I know, I know, I know we have Neeb in this game, but we, we do have Haz on the other side of the bracket. So, what, what are you thinking about his play? Uh-oh, I smell cheese in the air. Well, yeah, that's pretty obvious, but... Guys, let's move to the next part of the show. It's, of course, Europe versus I, Korea, I, as always I at don't... the Home Story Cup. Of course, I want to see the Europeans delivering a no, good show, but I'm sure that the Koreans will give them a good run Roddy. for their money. However, historically, Europeans do pretty well over here, Dan. Well, what 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 about what about Rainer though? Do you think I know we we're talking about Sarah, but what about Rainer? Once more, he shows that he is a force to be reckoned with. That's fair. All right. So, opening up that probe, not, well, just getting some basic scouting, that's all he was really looking for. And I think I accidentally lowered my, alright, let's fix that, there we go, much better. But what will we see? It's a Stargate. Are you really surprised by this? Is it really going to be um, like some sort of cheese or what do you think? Both players opening here into a standard macro game. Yeah. Very interesting to see how it will play out. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a couple of daps shading in. Maybe, maybe going to do some damage. Cancel the shade at the last second. Very bad micro. Wait. Very good micro. <laughs> Who knows? Split decision. Somehow the circlings get in. Oh! But the probes are going to be able to deal with it. Well, two, three going down at the adept on the other side. Uh, I don't know, man. It looks like Neeb actually getting the better end of those engages. We'll have to see, but but losing, he's at 25 drums. Where, I'm not entirely sure where where Rainer is gonna go from here. Looks like he's just adding some more drones on. But um, do you believe in a thing called Roach? I. Well, he doesn't even have a Roach one, but I, I guess so. Let's take a shot. Up. Oh. We're, we're, we're casting WCS, okay? A second Stargate. Actually pretty solid for taking advantage of an economic lead early on. A second Stargate allows him to just expand on the fact that, well, he doesn't really need to be worrying about his probes. He can get a third. Rainer can't tack up super quick. 
he can get plenty of... Well, he's going to try to get drones out, which means he's not really going to have anything to pressure. Or if he has anything to pressure, he can't get drones out. Those are the two options. I'm still not entirely sure how Rainer ended up... No, nope, me! Oh, my... That is rough. Thank you, Bleach. Uh, once again, losing one of his key units. Okay, Neeb, what are you going to do now? Phoenixes are a great choice. Um, Phoenixes are... Hashtag Ruddy Bill. No, everybody's been making Phoenixes for a while. And Neeb, definitely one of the few players who's actually still. Oh, um, okay. It was see, it was a bait. It was a it was a mind game. He was going for the mind game there the whole time. He wanted him to think he could get through the wall, but then he wasn't getting through the wall. I'm not sure why we have a couple stalkers here. I think he was killing an overlord. Stalker is not really a valuable unit. The vast majority of the time, unless you're desperate. Or need to have something to kill Broodlord, stuff like that. Now seven drones, Rainer at 56. He's still trying to build drones. He doesn't have a fourth. He doesn't really, he just starts his plus one melee. It is looking still very solid for Neem. Um. Rainer looks like he's just going to try to build up a Hydra count and deal with the Phoenixes, but if you're even or down in workers at this point and you're just now starting to build Hydras, the, the Protoss has a lot of time. Unless you just fly all your Phoenixes over Hydras, in which case then they have less time. We did see that in one of the earlier games when Neep was going mass Phoenix. Oh. And this is a classic Neeb style. Like, uh, it, it does very much seem. Well, he's getting his 12. Oh, that is. I don't know if he forgot it or if just he didn't feel like it was necessary, but that Twilight. Without the Twilight, you can't really attack. Without Charge or Templar, there's really no attacking option. And in the grand scheme of things, that is quite late. Yeah, Temple Archives on the way. Charge, plus one. All these necessary upgrades. More drones are going to fall. Rainer going to be beaten back again. How many has he lost thus far? 21. Only three Phoenixes taken down. So Neeb looking very solid. Six more gateway. How many did he have before? Oh, two to eight. Okay. I thought he had added more on, but is that's almost a hard wall around the main mineral line, which shouldn't really have any effect, but. Hallucinated Phoenix coming in, looking for a hive or maybe a spire switch. There is a style that Dark has been using a little lately and Rogue, where against the mass Phoenix, you kind of just go Corruptor into Roach Hydra, and you do that back and forth tech switch. You just get enough corruptors, like you're you get so many corruptors, it's actually a serious threat that you're just gonna kill their next eye with caustic spray. Not even worry about the phoenixes. Phoenixes don't hit corruptors for any. But that is not what Rainer is going for here. I think he felt like uh, he didn't really have the economy to try to go that route. Cause if you do scout it, if you do see the spire on the way, you can counter it quite quite hard. It's it's more of a gotcha, like you didn't see this spire coming because I was pressuring with roaches. That's not happening. No cancel. Neeb just a little slow on the draw, but the broad strokes are there. He's got all the basics. A single zealot. 
The Hydraling Bane at the back. Now, who's flanking who is the real question. Another hallucinated phoenix coming in. I think he's looking for whether there's a hive or not. I'm not 100%. I mean, it's good to just have something out there. Fleet Beacon is on the way. Not again. Another one. No cancel. 400 minerals gone. But still close to 200 supply. Will the third time be a charm on that Nexus? There's a, a Templar no storm for a few more seconds. A lot of Banelings coming through the shield batteries trying to hold on. There's a big attack to the north as well, waiting for its opportunity to strike. It's going to be coming in. The Hydras, only Hydras though. That, that could be an overextension if he goes too far. You gotta have some back up there. The Hydras will get melted in any straight up engage. Phoenix is scouting ahead. No Archon. Okay, he, he left a couple storms here. That was the missing piece in the last defense. Raynor just now building his hive. No Spire coming in. Third time trying to take that fourth. Mainling's rolling directly into the Nexus. No cancel. And Bainlink's on the right, killing 11 probes. He's still got 57. He's not out of it yet. The fourth base will be retaken again. Hmm. But this is still a very scary Protoss army. He's building a mama ship. Mama's coming home. Some more drones gonna be picked up. Queens are actually a pretty big uh, target to get. Looks like he'll get one. Gets both. Some phoenixes, some drones. Draws Rainer's attention away as well. He's actually just, these phoenixes finally finding real damage here. At a, a very important timing too. He's dragged a lot of the army back as he's building his fourth base and his key units. So he's created space right as he needed. Now, Raynor. Raynor's not happy about this anymore. He's had enough of this. How many Banelings? So many Banelings. 42 Banelings adding to the handful he already has. Neeb must defend. The mothership is two-thirds, three-quarters of the way done. The Phoenix is at the back. They scout the army. There's Immortals. There's Templar. There's Archons. And there's a lot of Protoss. But the Hydraling Bane, the last bastion, here it comes. And he force fields at the front. The Guardian Shields, the force fields, not perfect. Storms holding the line for now. But the Archons from the back, he has to bring the reinforcements from the third base. The fourth base is going to be targeted down again. Neeb losing a lot of his army, but a lot does stay intact as well. Still has a handful of Immortals Archons, some Templar with storms banked up. It's not the end of the world yet. Rainer, though, the problem is, what's stopping him from doing that again? He still has all those bases. He lost a few drones, sure. But they were easily rebuilt. He has five hatch production. He has a hive on the way. Getting plus three. Cracklings are already done. Their adrenal gland upgrade. The attack speed. Plus three melee attack. He can just keep hitting and hitting harder. Neeb. Working his way up to carriers, the mothership is actually a really big component of this. If he doesn't have detection, it makes this army so much stronger. The Hydras are not getting underneath the mothership. Does he target the Overseer? It just kind of... Oh, up. Very close. The Ling's trying to get through, but Neeb holds for now. The Zealot's giving their lives for ire. The army comes back. He's dragging a lot of the Templar back on this side, but there's still some left. The Phoenix is coming back in. And now these Phoenixes have really gotten value. Nine kills, ten kills, eight kills, six kills. Not to mention the scouting they've done. Well, this four crawler is the real MVP. Zerglings trying to slip through again. Somehow two Zerglings slip through into the main. Oh, and a lot of Banelings coming in the right side. Neeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
grows in potential. AKA his maximum potential army supply. 44 probes, still enough. Not, not a healthy number, but you still have an economy. Now what is there to stop this? This is, he's built a deadly unit composition. He's got a handful of carriers. The carriers are just there to force, oh what? No, oh, the mothership! A time warp will... Uh, I, well, that's kind of an important piece of the puzzle. More Zergling counterattack coming in. Rainer looking for weakness, but knee barreling down. There are no broods. What is there to stop the American probe toss from shredding apart the Italian? He's been battered. He's been bruised. He's lost more fourth bases than the number four. But storms are coming across the corruptors. One carrier taken down, but there are plenty of storms where that came. Archon's at the back, and if he can get the Archon Morphs as well, the carrier's almost out of interceptors. He's storming mostly his own interceptors. The storm's at the front. Neeb, can he reinforce? Immortals bashing through. The Immortals not with the fight, though. Storm's bringing most of the Hydras into the red. Corruptors look like they're gonna finish off the last carrier. Raider desperately trying to reinforce. The Immortals are distracted. If the Immortals were in the fight, this would be a shoo-in for Neeb. But the reinforcements of Raynor look like they may be enough to defend. He can just look at this hatchery and it dies. That's how Immortals work. But two more carriers come up. Raynor, his supplies are dwindling. 11 Hydras. I don't think that's gonna be enough to make the difference. The entire game, Raynor throwing jabs. But the Fist of Neeb comes in for a knockout blow. A rocky story. The drones are pulled. At this point, even if he does kill the army, which he won't. And Neeb. <laughs> Ties up the series. <laughs> Ties up the series two to two. What did you think of that game, Roddy? Wow, sick engagement. How on earth did he win that fight? Uh oh. Protoss! Thank you for your input. I agree. But still, throughout this series, I do have to say, Neeb definitely looking, um, I, I, I guess sloppy is the only way to say it. A lot of uh, missed cancels, missed micros, units getting picked off that really shouldn't be. Obviously still the game plan is there, the decision making is there. It's just, I fear that that might be the potential death of him. Just uh, uh, the wrong units in the wrong place at the wrong time, not because he decided that was a good idea, but because he didn't quickly enough remedy that mistake. Standard, once again. I would love, I would love, this would be the time. I think of any time, this would be the time to break out the cannon rush, right? I don't think he'll do it. It's Neeb. He's gonna play, he's more than likely gonna open up Stargate into Archon Drop. Or at least something very similar. The Stargate is almost a staple. I don't know if there's been a single game in this. There was that weird Robo game, which he ended up winning because of the Dark Templar. I still don't know what the game plan was on that Robo game. That was on Fracture. That was a little odd. Hmm.
Now, what are you doing, Neem? This almost seems like he's trying to hide something. But why? He's saving up enough gas for a Stargate. There it is. I guess, I guess a little bit less likely to get scouted by an OV early. It's a bit... A little bit in an offsider position. I'm not sure. Handful of Zerglings making their way over to the right side. And Raynor seems to get in with his lings like every game in this series. I'm not sure how. Well, maybe because he has an overlord scouting that there's nothing there to block the lings from getting in. I'm a genius. All right, 200 IQ at least. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh no, not like this. He has to recall, but he doesn't have the energy. Oh, he, wait, does he, did he just recall? Did he just chrono boost? No, he chrono boost, he didn't recall. Oh no, it's on the side. What? 20, it's, it's finished. Oh my. This is exactly what I feared this game would look like. I don't even know if this repowers warp gate. Oh no. Oh. Oh. Oh, Neeb. And that all, it it really felt like there was going to be a game like this in the series. And unfortunately, it is game five. He sends out a couple of depths, but remember, there is no, um... Do we actually kill those? Does that kill them? Yeah, that's enough. The surface area is good. You just... Everything. A series of incredibly unfortunate events. Well, he got an OV! The OV dies! And then the follow-up looks like it's going to be a, a bunch of adepts. Rainer, does he have a lair? He does not have a lair, and he hasn't started one. He got the Baneling Nest kicked off. A lot of things. And a Baneling Nest. Well, yeah, obviously. The plus one melee. So, if Neeb can get across before the Baneling Nest is done... Oh, uh, there are four queens... There's, that's just not enough adepts. Seven adepts are not enough. The Zergling's trying to get through on the other side. Need forced to warp in. Adept shading back. Rainer already blocking him. Is Rainer just gonna bust down the front door? Like, is it, do you have no respect? Oh, he gets on top. Plus one melee isn't done, but there aren't glaives either, so... Yeah, good luck with the third base, Neem. The Adept's being whittled down by the reinforcing Zerglings. Now, these are not great trades for Rainer. Uh, at all. But... I... What a save! A little bit of cute micro there. Wasn't it? Very bad micro. Oh, wait, no. Okay, whatever. Well, maybe you should pay attention to the game more often, Ronnie. The Oracles need a Red Bull or two to keep up with all this energy. Looks like Neeb's just gonna pull the trigger on a, a five, six, seven gate. Archon, charge lot all in. 
There's a roach horn on the way. Rainer's been up in his face the whole time, seeing all of this. I'm like, Neve is kind of trying to expand. No, oh. it's hard to get hyped. Neve, he, he might hold the Nexus. He does cancel. Rainer is adding on two hatches, one at his fourth. Oh. Got him. So it's going to be Roach Hydra. Roach speed is on the way. It looks like it will be done by any potential attack. Neep kind of just trying to go into default. Which is the Immortal Archon Charge Knot. And he hasn't been building any additional probes. Which... Somewhat indicates that he just wants to go for it. The third base is kind of a placeholder. A place to put his probes from the main and to maybe bait the Zerg into getting a little greedy. But I feel like Rainer can get away with almost anything right now. 150 supply. I thought I saw a Hydroden at one point. I did not. There is no Hydroden. Rainer coming in. Well, actually, there's no Hydroden. The Ling's on the opposite side. He really can't be losing that base. Oh, no. Oh, really? He has a couple force fields. One force field. None force field. It's fine. It's fine. What a thing! Neeb saves it. He's on the chase. The juggles. That's actually a lot of Ling's. A lot. He's lost 140 Ling's this game. But he needs to, he needs to pull back. He, that's a, that's way too much Zerg. You got to get a few more Archons. Plus one Banelings. That's a good spread. There's some potential here. Some of the charge not splitting back. Not bad. Just has to be very careful about that War Prism. The corrosive mouse triggers some of the shields, but Neve's still trying to break his way through. A lot of Zerglings coming out. Another round of Banelings coming in. The unit's starting to thin out here for Neve. Trying to pull back as many as possible. The juggles are good, but are they good enough? Oh, I mean, I mean Neve. Neve has a dream. Microing through. Doing his absolute best, but the shields are not up. The Archon with nothing. He can't save all. He maybe he can save one more. Oh no. That immortal. Two HP, it looked close. It looked like he had a dream. But it was just a nightmare. Oh no, please. And now Rainer is looking to exact his revenge. That was actually a lot closer than I thought it would be. I did not, yeah, I know how good Immortal Archon is, but it was still way closer than I thought. Mostly because of Neeb's really good splits against the Banes. Oh, no. The correct choice by Rainer with those plus two Banelings, and now Neeb's gotta go. The counterattack! The Zealots will hold for now. There's still a lot of Banelings at the front, crashing into the Zealots. The War Prism, where does it even warp in? The Archon's trying to hold the line. A little bit of Juggle Micro. He really, really wants to... Rainer wins it. Young Rainer moves on. <laughs>